Hey everyone, this is Juan and I'm here to do a tutorial on eukaryotic cells. And this should be used to actually complement some of the material that I've went through in the tutorial, a previous tutorial on eukaryotic cells versus prokaryotic cells. And I want to mention this is very brief, but it will help you understand what an eukaryotic cell is and therefore get, get better understanding on this topic. So I want to start talking about structures that we find in eukaryotic cells. And the first structure that I'm going to talk about briefly is the plasma membrane. And this is actually a, I'm going to change the colors here, this is a lip, lipoprotein membrane. So lipoprotein membrane. By lipoprotein, the word says it all, it's a lipid, lipids with proteins. So it's a phospholipid bilayer, which means there are two layers, and proteins. So we see that there is a mesh of proteins in a phospholipid bilayer. And it's here, as you can see, this red or pinkish color. The nucleus is the structure that you can clearly, clearly see in a eukaryotic cell. The name actually says it all. This structure, the round sphere that we see here, the green sphere, this is the nucleus. And this is found in eukaryotic cells, the true nucleus, which you do not find in prokaryote cells. And this is about five micrometers in diameter. And this is where you find all the DNA or the genetic material of a cell. More things about the nucleus. This is going to be discussed in other tutorials in more details. This is the site of DNA replication. And also where RNA is produced, so RNA synthesis. Again, we're going to discuss this in more details in different tutorials. Another structure that you find inside the nucleus is the nucleolus. And you can see it here, this dark dot in, inside the, the, the round uh, green sphere that I just showed you. And this, I want to point now that this is the site of our RNA, so our RNA transcription, and also ribosome assembly. I will go into more detail about what our RNA is and the tra transcription and also ribosome assembly, but in a later tutorial. But right now just get an idea of what nucleus and nucleolus does or is. Now one of the most important uh, organelles in eukaryotic cells are the mitochondria. These are very important organelles. These ones that I'm showing here, these kind of oval shaped or rod shaped um, organelles. And these are responsible for or they are the site of oxidative metabolism. And by oxidative, we're going to discuss this in more detail, but of course you're talking about the use of oxygen here. And here is where you're going to see the production or the generation of most ATP in the cell. So responsible for generation of most ATP. And I'm sure you have heard about ATP before. This is the energy of the cell. So energy. Now it's time to go over one of the most important organelles of the eukaryotic cells, the endoplasmic reticulum, also known you've probably heard about in textbooks as the ER. 
And this is this extensive network of intracellular membranes that you see here in this picture in blue and green. And there are two main functions related to endoplasmic reticulum. The first one is processing and transport of proteins, as I'm writing here. And the second one, also very important, synthesis of lipids. And you can also divide the endoplasmic reticulum in two. So the first one is the smooth ER, where you're going to find the second function, actually, the synthesis of lipids. This is where it's going to happen. So in the smooth ER, you have synthesis of lipids. And the second one is the rough ER, and it has its name, rough, because you can see lots of ribosomes, lots of little dots that look like it's kind of rough surface. And ribosomes, as you know probably, or you will know in later tutorials, are related to uh, protein production or processing of proteins, because these structures are involved in translation. Now I want to talk about the cytoskeleton. And as the name probably rings a bell in your head that we're talking about the cell skeleton. Because cyto, word origin, means cell. And this is basically a network of protein filaments extending throughout the cytoplasm of the cell that provides the structural framework so structural framework of thin protein filaments. Remember that. And now I want to talk about, I believe, the four most important functions of the cytoskeleton. I'm going to write them down for you. So functions. As I mentioned before, it's related to cell shape or provides cell shape. The second one I want to talk about is intracellular transport. So anything that is being transported throughout the cell has to go through this structural framework. The third function is cytoplasmic organization. Of course, if we talk about a, a, a network throughout the cytoplasm, we have to consider that it is involved with the organization in the cytoplasm of the cell. The final one is, of course, movement. There are some cells that, have, that are specialized in movement, and of course, the cytoskeleton is responsible for it. Now the types of thin protein filaments that are very important, please memorize them because they're quite important and very basic. The first one we have microfilaments. The second one we have intermediate filaments. And the third one and final one we have microtubules. And I wrote these down in order of thickness, going from the thinnest ones, the microfilaments, to the thickest ones, microtubules. I want to mention three things that are very important or very common in eukaryotic cells. The first one is compartmentalization. It's a long word, but means something very simple. It's actually the process of making compartments or organelles which have different functions, and they're bound by a membrane, so membrane-bound organelles. The second thing, which is a very important topic, actually, especially when you talk about cancer, for example, signal transduction, 
very common in eukaryotic cells, and this is cell communication that we're talking about. When a signaling molecule activates a cell surface receptor, we talk about signal transduction. The third th thing that I want to talk about is extra chromosomal DNA. We're talking about DNA that is outside the nucleus, and we see that in mitochondria, so mitochondrial DNA. And there is another organelle that contains extrachromosomal DNA. You find, you find it in plants, actually responsible for photosynthesis, chloroplast DNA in plants. To finalize this uh, quick tutorial on eukaryotic cells, I want to go over the genetic apparatus or of eukaryotic cells. So how it is arranged. So genetic apparatus. And one thing that is important to mention is that in eukaryotes, we see diploid cells. We see some haploid, but usually when we talk about gametes. But in general, cells, uh, eukaryotic cells, are diploid. And they have two copies of each chromosome. This is what diploid means. Two copies of each chromosome. And another thing that is important to mention is that eukaryotic DNA is linear. In bacteria, you see, or in prokaryotes, you see that the DNA is circular, actually. I want to quickly draw a chromosome because this is the way the DNA is arranged in the, the nucleus when, when there is mitosis or meiosis occurring because usually it is found dispersed in the nucleus but when mitosis happen you will find chromosomes like this, which are DNA condensed, and they have a centromere and two chromatids. And also it's important to mention that DNA in mitochondria is circular, which gives you a hint of how, or how cells were or eukaryotic cells were originated. We're going to talk about that in endosymbiosis.